Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Pizka as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Good afternoon, brilliant humans, and welcome back to KubeCon Europe. We are in beautiful Amsterdam, very excited to be here. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my co-host on his first day, Rob, how are you feeling? Awesome, this has been great. Your whole, I mean, it's 4.30 day one and it's been jam-packed. You're doing awesome. No, I'm, I'm, you give me all the energy and the, <laughs> and the great guests that we have give me the energy as well. So this has been a fantastic day. Yes, actually we have the perfect pair of guests for this afternoon. Natalia and Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. You are on the developer advocate teams, both of you, at Red Hat. And uh, this whole event is really about celebrating developers. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the show. I'm doing awesome, thank you. Love that <laughs> attitude. You? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, it's great. Uh, we're enjoying this conference uh, and we're seeing there's a, a momentum for developers on Kubernetes and also the conference is reflecting that. So we're really enjoying that. It feels like the energy is back up. I'm assuming you guys have been at some of the other KubeCons. And now I feel like we're sort of in a before times yes. vibe. I don't want to jinx it, but right we yeah, finally yeah. got that energy up. Everyone smiles. The show floor is absolutely packed. I imagine it's busy for you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It's been uh, nonstop talking to you know customers, potential customers. We're doing demos, and you know, and there's a lot of enthusiasm. Like people are happy to be here. Last yeah. year I was in Valencia, and you know, everybody with their mask, and there was a lot of hesitancy and everything, and you know, this is, seems way more like how it was before. <laughs> Bless, yeah, yeah. no, it's, yeah. it's great to feel that energy. Yeah, yeah I, th I think it's great, especially when you, when you were in the keynote and there were like 58% of the people, it's their first one, their first KubeCon, wow. so I, I have to imagine a lot of those developers are coming to you guys and trying to, trying to figure out how do they take that first step and how do they get to a better experience with Kubernetes. But that's got to be a lot of the questions you must be getting in the booth. And right, yeah, we see lots of people, uh, beginners and experts together, enthusiastic of, of, uh, of Kubernetes and all the software, open source software around. Yeah. They came to question, to hear, uh, they're really, you can see they're really happy uh, about that. And we, we are happy too, so this is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think, um, this is the first KubeCon where I'm really feeling like there's also a developer presence, whereas in, I feel like previous years it was a lot of focus on the kind of more infrastructure side of Kubernetes and you know, how, how do we get it all set up yeah. and configured and everything. And now I, th I feel like we're getting to the next level where okay, now we have, you know, most people are at least you know somewhat familiar with Kubernetes from the operations side. Right. And the developers are now like, hey, this is actually something that we can use but how exactly do we use it, and uh, how do we get started with it, and how can we get you know the feedback that we need to have our applications up and running, but also in a stable way where we're not going to be called you know at two in the morning to, oh, yeah. to fix things because you know there's <laughs> un unexpected things happening. So there's a lot of questions around you know like how can we move our applications. So we have at Red Hat we have this, and I'm sure it's not just at Red Hat, but. We really like to focus on this inner and outer loop kind of story where uh, the inner loop is where the developers are doing their coding, you know, they're doing their local tests and their local uh, development, perhaps even setting up a local container, but then they're committing their code and at that point you go to this kind of outer loop where, um, you know, you have a pipeline that kicks off and then, you know, your application gets built and, you know, pushed to some registry and deployed with, you know, some sort of GitOps or whatever. And so this whole kind of story where we go from beginning all the way to first, you know, perhaps a testing cluster, then a staging cluster, and, you know, maybe even automatically to production. I mean, that's kind of the end goal, right? right? <laughs> and right. so we're really, you know, yeah. yeah working yeah. on making that as seamless, as seamless as possible and we, we're getting a lot of traction with that. So we're building you know, tools to help with that yeah. as much as we can. I, I have to imagine, it, it, to me, it's, we've had seen a theme since we've been here around platform engineering and I, you know, having been at Amazon and what was always talked about by the engineers on my team was don't SRE me. 
Um, they <laughs> didn't want to be the SRE and get that 3 a.m. phone call right. to have <laughs> to get up and fix it every time. So how do we have some you know, split responsibilities? Are you seeing that and is that really where a lot of your efforts going into is to help people in that platform engineer, you know, the, when it's the handoff part of it, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, I think it, yeah, I don't right, know. Right, right, yeah. um, no, I just want to add, you see the maturity of a software where you don't care much about the infrastructure bit and you start talking about, you know, developer experience. I think Kubernetes and the industry get into this maturity. Now we're focusing on developer experience. To your point, it's really important because the platform engineering, it started really as a, a new thing, right? From site reliability engineer or DevOps just to focus on how to build platforms for developers. Yep. How to let them consume the platform or uh, self-serve in the platform. So platform engineering is, is getting a, a very good momentum and Kubernetes, uh, I think it's the right place where to do uh, platform engineering and uh, there are open source tools around that and Red Dot is joining uh, uh, a very popular open source software for platform engineering an uh, internal developer platform called Backstage. We're bringing our enterprise expertise into the, this community project. We're joining this community and create a community project called Project Janus, which is, uh, which, which is a, a project, Backstage project, where we're building these developer uh, portals for, for developers. And we're building on top of that. Yeah. How is the community responding to that? You guys, we've been talking about community since before we were even on stage. You're obviously super passionate about community. I can actually feel the energy from you guys about that. How, how has everything been received? How, how's it going? I think, I mean, I think the backstage community is pretty happy, you know, with uh, Red Hat joining the project. I mean, uh, yeah. we, we have some leverage, I guess, in, in, the, <laughs> in yeah. the open source community. Some people may have heard right? of you before. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, yeah, I, I like to think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Done a few things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's been <laughs> really positive. And also, you know, talking to customers, uh, what I've heard a lot is, you know, customers are building some sort of portal themselves in, in you know, kind of custom, not really aware that, you know, in the communities there's projects like Backstage that are yeah. being built. Um, and so there's a lot of enthusiasm um, among, you know, those people too that, hey, cool, you know, like Red Hat is uh, is joining this project. It's and on our you know, team. Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. So there's... Uh, that's great. Yeah, a lot of happiness. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the thing is that, and I got it out of the whole keynote this morning was, there's a, you know, 190 some odd projects and you're sitting there going, there's just so much going on. And I think that's where, you know, and I assume that's where your roles come in is to help people understand, okay, this is what those projects do because they didn't really go into it in the keynote today, but I'm sure that you're getting a lot of that. Not only the people over in the other wing over here that are uh, have their booths there, but is that what you hear a lot of? And, yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely, you know, again, talking about customers, but also, yeah. you know, the communities that we work in, there's, you know, it, it's hard to know, you know all the projects that are here. I don't because it's right. too much. And uh, so, you know, but people need some sort of opinionated path to right. you know, having things work and, you know, being able to not focus just on, like, learning new projects and figuring them out and everything. So, right. I mean, there's definitely demand for... If you see the opinion. CNCF landscape, it's yeah. a very gigantic map with tons of project, open source projects, which is great. But then you need some pattern, right? Some uh, right. blueprint. And Red yeah. Hat has uh, this concept of validated pattern. So our opinionated way to make, compose everything together, the, the most important bits, like, you know, for pipeline, we use Tecton. For uh, GitOps, we use Argo CD. For internal developer portal, we use Backstage. You know, we're connecting all the bit and making our path, uh, but using all those open source projects and contributing to those projects yep. into the communities. It's such a wonderful mesh, too, when you've got a company like Red Hat and you've got all these open source projects. I'm curious, for you guys internally, what is the evaluation process like when you're figuring out which projects to participate in mm -hmm. versus not? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, we have our uh, office of CTO that uh, see the, what's going on in the community. We're deciding also what project we should invest more. We're putting engineering. Right, so, shall we start a new investing cash, right. time, right. resources, a lot into right. these. Yeah, keep Absolutely. going. So we're, we're looking at existing project or looking also at our project. Sh shall we start something from our experience? Shall we uh, look for other project? And so there's an office 
uh, there's a department uh, and uh, there's a that make this decision and then putting you know engineering effort, uh, marketing, and, and you know all the product effort, building the product around those open source software. Yeah, and yeah, and basically we're listening to people and see what are their pain points. That was going to be my next right. question. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and try to address those. So one example is uh, is Podman Desktop where we're feeling a, a pain point where, you know, like Docker Desktop is a great tool. However, there's some, you know, some decisions that were made and perhaps some, some things that the customers or, you know, the users are missing. And so we're, you know, like we have Podman already. Let's, let's see how we can expand on top of that with a nice user experience that we, you know, that we've now been putting a lot of effort into to make it you know, consumable on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, and kind of making a seamless experience, not just for containers, but making it into experience where developers can use this tool to have containers that can then, you know, be used to even go to, you know, be deployed to uh, Kubernetes, to OpenShift. You can, you know, create YAMLs for Kubernetes directly from Podman Desktop. Universal. There's a whole bunch of yeah. things yeah. that you can do with Podman Desktop that are really cool. And there's a lot of uh, effort that goes into that, but so that's one example of. Uh, yeah, Podman was an initiative yeah. that started uh, internally, right? We we started creating Podman as an alternative container runtime, mm -hmm. um, open source, but with not another approach compared to Docker, which was uh, uh, rootless uh, and daemonless, is another approach, splitting the code base. It started internally, right? Yeah. Now the community is adopting more and more Podman. Um, and also the Kubernetes uh, uh, is uh, using a, a runtime called Container Runtime Interface. We have an open source implementation around that. Um, and on top of that, um, this implementation is called Cryo. On top of that, we also defined the, started doing a desktop application around Podman called Podman Desktop. So Linux, Mac, Windows developer can start building the container locally with Podman Desktop and then deploy their application, uh, their pod application on Kubernetes uh, uh, anywhere, basically. So this is an example of internal initiative, right? Yeah. Uh, the, as uh, we're, we're talking about open source, how we manage open source projects. Yeah. What is that feedback loop like with your community when, I mean, you obviously got your ear to the ground and it's very clear you're both super plugged in. How, how do you get feedback from the Red Hat community, from everyone, what's that like? So. We have we have a lot of people on the ground, you know, talking to customers. So we have the solution architects in uh, in all the different markets that we work in. So we talk a lot with them to get to see, you know, what is the customer saying. We also, you know, do a lot of uh, sessions ourselves. So we have this Dev Nation uh, program at Red Hat, and uh, so you know, where we as developer advocates go and talk, you know, do sessions at the customer and, you know, see like, hey, is this uh, something that you're interested in? And, and let's, really let's show us, it. yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, show them some, some examples of how, how they can use it. Um, and we're getting a lot of nice feedback on that. But, you know, like places like this too, you get so much Fire good hose, feedback. Right? Yeah, I exactly. Mean, yeah. So and people many. are not shy to share their <laughs> opinions here. <laughs> That's true. Very yeah. true. Which that is was a great. real genuine yeah. laugh. No, there, yeah. is, there are not a lot of shy. You're either super shy or very open yeah. about your yeah. opinions. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There yeah. is, I mean, I guess very open source, if you will, when it right. comes to, yeah. to your thoughts. Yeah. But that and is. we love that. I mean, yeah. yeah. It yeah. can be good and bad. I mean, I, I want to hear it all. <laughs> yeah, it, it was funny because we ran into uh, a, the developer, uh, VP of development for an IoT company last night, and just by happenstance, we started having a discussion, and he was like trying to figure out how to get started with Kubernetes. So like something like Podman Desktop would be great for what he's trying to do mm -hmm. in there. And I, I think that's that kind of stuff is super, super helpful to the developer community because he's looking at it, everything's in VMs and they're starting to build microservices, but we're, I don't want to go up to a cloud and test it all out. It's all about decreasing that complexity. Yeah, yeah. 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 and I, I would assume that also helps them uh, with a cost control thing, which is pretty important right, right, right. now. I mean, this yeah. is, you know, given the times in the world, you know, I think that Oh yeah, that absolutely, helps, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah no. I was agreeing. Making the right choice on yeah. the on the right tools and uh, making worth, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we have a, a I think a funny story about you know so we have the OpenShift sandbox, which is uh, you know like a free version of OpenShift. So you go to developers.redhat.com okay. and you can sign up and you get a free uh, OpenShift 
for 30 days that you can play with and you know deploy some stuff in and whatever more. It's really cool. But so before uh, we were the default deployment was just a regular Kubernetes deployment, um, and so we also have OpenShift serverless based on uh, on okay. Knative, right? So we can scale up from zero based on the requests, and so we changed the default deployment to Knative serverless. Um, which saved us a bunch of money on Sandbox to the point where now we can offer more uh, resources for each Sandbox to the users because we have more resources available. I mean, that's a great example of how you can kind yeah. of save right. some money on the... Uh, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, American thing. Well, and you're giving thing, it back you, into the, what I love about what you just said is we yeah. saved money so we're giving the community more. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than just saying, sweet, we're yeah. just going to skim that <laughs> right. off the yeah. top, which, yeah. I mean, I'm American capitalist, you know, I wouldn't yeah. blame you if that's what you wanted to do, but, but, I, but I think that's, I think, yeah, I think that's really, I think that's really important. I'm curious, you said something in the very beginning of our conversation, which, it, and, and I've been, well, you guys have been in the Kubernetes space probably longer than I have, but I've been in, hanging out here for about four or five years, and we're, and I would say up until about six months ago, we're still in a very early adoption phase, when you look at the true scale of how people are deploying containers. Right. Do you, do you, from the energy I'm getting from you and what you were just saying, do you think we're starting to tip over where more and more people are only scaling up using Kubernetes? Or is it a hybrid? Where are we off at? What is your feeling, Natalie? Well, I think there's I like a, a maturity <laughs> of usage of Kubernetes. It's, yeah. it's the de facto platform, the target platform for your app, right? Yeah. I, I don't know if in the local workstation you have Kubernetes, you might have the, some kind or Minikube, whatever, but remotely you have you might have some remote cluster, right? Or, or your production is Kubernetes. So right. this, there is this maturity and all, all the tools around are built on Kubernetes. I, th I see that, uh, I see this, uh, this expertise. Even if the people are Kubernetes beginner, they want to learn, right? But uh, some team, some, some company has their production on Kubernetes most of the time. Yeah. Uh, so it's a standard, like an operating system, right? Uh, yeah. Your target app is on Kubernetes, and that's the fact. That's an opinion and a half. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah we can see. Yeah. It's not 100% of the case, right? But uh, most of the case is uh, is like that. Um, so moreover, for you know, when you have cloud native application uh, or kind of modern uh, application, yeah. uh, most of the time is is that the case. I love that. Well, yeah. thank you both for being here. Congratulations on all you've got going on. I loved hearing about the community integration with the projects. Natali, Kevin, you're wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. First timers, but no one would have known yes. had I not <laughs> just said that. Awesome. Rob, you're also doing fabulous, well, continued fabulous. My name is Savannah Peterson. We're here in beautiful Amsterdam for KubeCon EU. You're watching theCUBE, the source for high-tech coverage. <laughs>